Now when we look at scanners to help us fix a Volkswagen with a mass airflow problem, if you have Volkswagen software, and remember many aftermarket scanners now allow you to look at Volkswagen as if you had the Volkswagen factory tool, give you some testing. The problem is if you're not familiar with the way that Volkswagens and Audis do their testing, you're sometimes uncomfortable with what the scanner is displaying. So what I want to do here is take a minute to show you one of the most common areas that we go to troubleshoot with a scanner on a Volkswagen um, or Audi fuel trim problem and obviously following right along with the mass airflow guidelines here. But I want to make it simpler so you can understand how quickly we can get to the bottom of this. First of all, Volkswagen does not call their PIDs, or what we traditionally call PIDs, PIDs. They call them measuring blocks. It is where we're going to measure the um, different pieces of information. In this case, we're going to look at what we traditionally would call fuel trims. The measuring block set that we want to go to is in what we call group 32. So if you have a Snap-on or if you have a VAGCOM or you have Volkswagen software for other tools, it'll allow you to go to measuring blocks, group 32. And if you can find your way there, uh, what you're going to find is there's a tremendous amount of great information. In measuring blocks 1 and 2, I have two values. I have minus 18 in block number 1. I have 24.2 in block number 2. That's because these readings are from a four-cylinder car. If I had a six-cylinder car, I would have readings in blocks 3 and 4 also. What block number one is, is what we call additive. Additive is a number that Volkswagens and Audis use that represent what more commonly is called long-term fuel trim at idle. So additive fuel trim is fuel trim that is done at less than 1,000 RPM. So additive can be very handy once you know what it is because it is telling you what's going on at a specific RPM range with fuel trim. In this case, less than 1,000 RPM additive, what we have is minus 18%, which is the computer pulling fuel away from this car. Now, if I look at the fuel trim in measuring block number two, what I'm going to find is I have long-term fuel trim above idle, which is called multiplicative. Multiplicative is long-term fuel trim at higher RPM. So this is very, very important because by using this, I can try to very quickly with my scanner make a judgment of where I want to spend my time fixing a car. Do I want to fix this fuel trim code because of a vacuum leak or do I want to fix this fuel trim code because I have a go out and check the mass airflow um, which may be contaminated. These measuring blocks help me get that done very quickly. First, all the readings should be plus or minus 5%. So when we looked at measuring block at number one at minus 18, obviously that was way out of range. What's interesting here is that measuring block number two is at 24.2, which means the computer is adding fuel. So we are adding fuel at higher RPM, taking away at lower RPM. Almost always when we get these readings, it's usually an indication of a bad mass airflow, and we use those custom specs that I gave you before to go out, and in 60 seconds or less, you should be able to get those readings done. Now, if it's a mass airflow above, meaning that if I have only high readings above or only high readings below, then that's an indication of what's going on. For example, if I have high adaptive numbers or additive numbers at lower RPM, that's usually always an indication of a vacuum leak. So if it's high only at idle, that's usually an indication of a vacuum leak. So additive and multiplicative are great ways to get to the bottom of a Volkswagen and Audi very quickly. Again, your scanner may have the ability to show you these, you just may not have taken advantage of that section of the software. So I challenge you, if you have Volkswagen software in your aftermarket tool, or if you have a Volkswagen factory tool, go there, look at the numbers, and use them to take advantage um, of fuel trim numbers. One last note before we leave the mass airflow discussion on Volkswagen and Audi. As I always say, it's not about the test, because the test is usually very easy to do, it's about the technique. Keep in mind, in every one of these scenarios, when I am snapping the throttle, that snap has to be very hard and very aggressive, meaning, as I always say, you need to snap it like a man. You need to snap it hard, get a big gulp of air. If you do not snap the throttle as hard as you possibly can, what will happen is you won't achieve those above numbers and you'll falsely 
um, replace the mass airflow that doesn't need to be replaced. So it's very important. If you're using your meter to do this instead of a scope, well, I've given you scope patterns. If you're using a meter, that's fine. Make sure you put your meter on min-max. Make sure that meter has the ability to capture at least a glitch capture of one millisecond, meaning that if you're going to hit min-max, you're going to snap the throttle because the sensor will react way faster many times than your meter will update. So using your meter right on the line, when you, signal line, when you do the snap, is the best way to get it done. If you put it on min-max and you have a fast enough capture, you'll see that it does a great job of determining if you do or do not have a problem with the mass airflow. So with additive multiplicative and some quick tests on the mass airflow, your testing on Volkswagen Audi um, fuel system should be a lot easier to get done.